So welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to see in detail what is financial accounting. So the contents of this video are financial accounting, terms used in financial accounting. We will look at what is statement of financial position. We will also look in detail what is statement of profit or loss, accounting concepts and accounting conventions. So we will start with what is financial accounting. Financial accounting is concerned with the production of annual financial statements in accordance with relevant accounting standards and legislations. So any listed company, okay, any company which has like got money from the public people, okay, they have to submit the financial records to the shareholders. So this is like mandatory and compulsory. So this record, okay, this financial accounts or records has to be prepared as per the accounting standards and legislations which is created by the government and authorities like uh, CA and company law. Whenever a business transaction takes place, such as a sale, purchase or payment of an expense, there is a need to record the transaction in the organization's accounting records. So any transaction takes place, it has to be recorded. The transaction is first entered in the books of prime entry. The transaction is first entered in the books of prime entry. So now we will see like what is the importance of having this accounting. First, it helps us to have systematic records of all transactions. Once we have all the transactions recorded, then it's like quite easier to prepare financial statements such as uh, profit or loss account or uh, financial position. Next one is the assessment of process progress. So once we track all the transactions and all transactions are getting recorded, we can easily prepare profit or loss statement uh, every month or every week okay, or even every quarter we could prepare it. So we can easily assess how our company is progressing. It also helps in decision making such as whether the company should get any short term loans or should they get any long term loans like that kind of decision making can be made. Any listed company should uh, have are required to have uh, proper records. Okay, that is a legal requirement. So if, if a company has raised money from public through IPO or through equity, they have to submit these records. And these records are useful for interested groups such as uh, shareholders, bankers, financiers, tax, tax uh, authorities. To many people, it's like very useful. These records shall, can be shown as a legal evidence in any kind of case, for example, any merger or acquisition or any tax compliance in any places, these accounts can be shown as a evidence. And finally, it helps in the computation of tax and that has to be paid to the government. Also, in terms of settlement of merger, when two companies are coming together, uh, they have to like first check the accounts are proper, then only they will come together and create a new company. For example, uh, if you take a company like Procter and Gamble, Procter would have been a different company and Gamble company would have been different and they could have been combined together and to create a new company called as Procter and Gamble. Okay, So there are like many companies which have combined together and created a new company. So these are the importance of having accounts. So now we will move on to the most important part of financial accounting, the terms used in financial accounting. So only when we know the terms used here, we can uh, we can speak the language of accounting. So we'll start from the statement of financial position. So what is statement of financial position? SOFP is a financial statement that reports a company's assets, liabilities and shareholders equity. The balance sheet or the SOFP is one of the three core financial statements used to evaluate a business. The balance sheet is a snapshot representing the state of a company's finances, what it owns and owes as of the date of publication. So on a particular date, okay, what is the total amount of assets and liabilities and shareholders equity does a company have? So it is only a particular date on which the company has these items. Okay, So it cannot tell like what happened in between, it cannot tell. Okay, It can tell only the closing uh, statement of financial position. Only on the end of the year they can tell how much of assets, liabilities and equity the company has. 
what has happened in between okay that we have to decide or that we have to find out between the difference between two SOFP okay so the last year SOFP and this year SOFP if we take together the difference we can find like what has happened okay so last year asset was like 1 crore this year asset is 1.2 crore so from where did the 0.2 crore come from so what asset it is okay so balance sheet are always like a photo they are not like a video fundamental analysts use balance sheets in conjunction with other financial statements to calculate financial ratios so sofp is like very useful based upon this we can analyze how uh, strong the company is how much assets the company has uh, whether the company would be able to repay its debt okay we can find out like a lot of things with sofp so this is the sofp format so usually the first item would be goodwill then followed by intangible proper assets then property plant equipment financial assets and current assets so current assets also they have a classification it starts from cash short term financial asset receivables and inventories so this is the other part of the uh, sofp so we have the equity and liability so the asset part here refers to all the assets that the company is owning the liability and equity part is what the company owes to other people so this is, these are the money which is the which the company has got from the outside people so if you see here the capital which is the shareholders money okay is also considered as a outside money okay it is also considered as a liability okay we can't say it's liability but it comes on the equity and liability side okay so it is like the company has has got money from all these types of people and it has invested all that money in this types of assets okay so that is about the concept here so if you take here equity will have consider share capital revaluation surplus retained earnings liabilities will consider of two types non-current liabilities and the current liabilities current liabilities have a list of items okay which we will see as we progress in the next videos so we will start with the terms used in financial position first one is asset first we will see like what is an asset then we will look at what is fixed asset or non current asset intangible financial asset current asset and fictitious asset see the names which are used uh, in this video are like both uh, the the names which we use in india okay and the names which are used in abroad also okay so somewhere like uh, in ifrs what the names they use that name also we have included so in india we called it as fixed asset but in uh, uh, uk and in ifrs language they call it as non current assets okay so i have used the words interchangeably also in several places okay so ensure that you understand both the words because uh, in today's world it has become a norm that you have to know international accounting standards also you have to know so ensure that you understand both the terms so we'll also discuss about the liability these terms will be like discussing so we'll start so we'll first start with an asset so what is an asset so there's a definition for asset asset is a resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity so what does that mean see anything okay anything where the company has the ability to control it okay it can be a land it can be a building it can be a copyright okay or it can be a vehicle or uh, it can be any it can be anything that the company is controlling okay so can human beings be uh, or employees can be uh, set as an asset the answer is no because employees are not controllable okay we cannot control employees for example we can operate the machine 24 bar 7 or whenever we want we can't do that with the employee okay the employee has his own will he can move from away from the company also so that is why employees are not an asset of a company okay so an asset is a resource controlled by the entity so that's the first part because of controlling that as a result of past events okay the asset should have been created because of the past events okay so you cannot say that 
I am going to construct a building in the future. Shall I show that as an asset? No, you cannot show that as an asset. Okay. Only things which have been already acquired. Okay. If you have constructed a building, that can be shown as an asset. If you have bought raw materials to construct a building, even that raw material can be shown as an asset. But if you tell, I am going to construct a building. Okay. And uh, can, I sh can I show that as an asset? The answer is no. Okay. You cannot do that. And from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. Okay. So, assume that you say that I, I have a old building. It is such a old building. Okay. We bought it like 100 years before. Okay. The land worth is zero because due to some uh, uh, chemical contamination. Okay. Or due to some reasons, the land worth is zero now. Okay. And the building worth is also zero now. Okay. Shall I show it as, uh, as an asset? Okay. See, at least can we rent it out or can we use it? You say that it's so bad condition, you cannot use. So, government is saying that you cannot use. So, the land value is zero, the building is depreciated. Okay, you cannot use it at all. The answer is you cannot show it as an asset because there is no meaning of showing that asset, showing that thing as an asset. Okay, there's no land value, no building value. Okay, and you cannot use it. And how can you show it? So, it should, it cannot be shown as a asset okay it can be you can have the legal document you can say that i am the owner of that building but when there's nothing occurring from that asset it's only zero worth okay so these three conditions have to be met number one the resource has to be controlled by the entity number two as a result of past event and number three some future economic benefits have to be expected from the asset okay so this definition is from ifrs or we can also tell an asset like this, a right or other access is legally enforceable, which means economic resources can be used at a company's discretion and its use can be precluded or limited by, a, by an owner. Okay, So you can also tell something as an asset when the company has the right to direct its usage, Okay, to switch on an asset, sorry, to switch on a machinery, to switch off a machinery, Okay, to use a vehicle, to not use a vehicle that's and all are a legally enforceable discretion because they are the owners okay so this is called as a this can also be called as an asset okay this is an also a, a kind of a definition for an asset to be present a company must possess a right to it as of the date of their financial statements so on the date of the financial statement okay for example the accounts is prepared on 31 12 Okay, 2020. On that date, the asset, the owner of the asset should be the company. Okay, they cannot say that I will become the owner of the company in five days and all. That doesn't matter. They on that day they have to be a owner. So an economic resource is something that is scarce and has the ability to produce economic benefit by generating cash inflows or decreasing cash outflows. So the the an asset should be able to produce some kind of a benefit. Okay either by generating cash inflows or decreasing cash outflows okay if it doesn't do anything okay then it is not an asset at all okay it's like uh, even if you take a land okay uh, empty land where no crops are growing okay no crops are growing but still if you can sell the land okay at a little bit higher price then that is also like a additional cash inflow okay the price for example if it still has a market price and if it still has some buyers even rarely it has buyers still it is an asset only okay so anything that can produce you cash inflow or decreases the cash outflow okay so that can be something like uh, uh, a machinery okay or something which reduces the uh, cash expenses so because of that that can also be considered as a asset okay so these are the definition of asset or generally about asset now we will see specifically like what are the different types of assets okay so these are the different types of assets so now we look at them so first we'll start with non current assets see non current assets are fixed assets are like very simple they have a life of more than one year time okay so they have a life of more than one year so mostly like buildings okay land uh, or machinery these things have more than one year life the second one is non current assets cannot be converted 
to cash easily so usually the assumption is in one year time you cannot convert this into cash okay three they are required for the long term needs of a business okay you need a factory you need a machinery you need a, a plant you need a building head office so all these even vehicles are long term needs an adjustment for the aging of fixed assets is made based on periodic charges called depreciation okay so as you have an asset okay it gets older because you have it like more than like uh, one year so assume that you have a uh, asset which is like living for four years okay some vehicle is living is is being used in the company for four years okay after that it, it's like scrap so every year you have to consider that the machine is getting older so you have to have some kind of a depreciation okay so depreciation is reduction in value non current assets may be subdivided into tangible and intangible so tangible assets include land property planned at equipment and intangible is what we are going to now discuss okay so we'll start from intangible here an intangible asset is an asset that is not physical in nature okay you cannot like touch or feel it okay or even see it usually the examples are goodwill brand recognition intellectual property rights such as patents trademarks copyrights or all, all of these are intangible assets an intangible asset can be classified as either indefinite or definite so again you can classify an intangible asset here okay so what is an indefinite asset indefinite asset means we never know when the life of that intangible asset ends okay for example when can we say the brand name of coca cola gets totally useless okay can we tell that the answer is no we can never tell because it can be it can be in people's mind for even so many years okay so they have been here around for 100 years they can also be for here another 100 years we cannot say when it will end okay so a company's brand name is considered an indefinite intangible asset because it stays with the company for as long as it continues operations okay so sometimes even after the company stops operations still the company's name might be remembered by by people for example uh, royal enfield stopped its producing bikes but still people remembered royal enfield for around some 20 years 30 years okay or there was a scooter called as vespa which was like produced 30 years before in 1990s even in 2020s people still remember that name okay so this is an indefinite asset we never know when the life of this asset ends so the value indefinite intangible assets should be checked yearly to find if it is worth the same or not as last year okay so does the value of coca-cola brand increasing or decreasing if it increases we have to increase the asset worth if it decreases we have to decrease its asset worth so yearly we have to check whether coca-cola's brand value is increasing or not so what is about the definitive intangible asset okay see a definitive intangible asset is something where you know you have the right to use that asset only for a particular years okay for example uh, you buy a five year copyright license so for example uh, you uh, you take mcdonald's okay see mcdonald's is a us company okay and some indian company has taken okay uh, indian company called as jubilant food food i think okay jubilant foods so they have taken a license to uh, produce okay uh, domino's pizza i think domino's pizzas okay license they have taken here so that is for around some 10 years or 20 years time okay within that 20 years time whatever money they have paid for domino's pizza okay the license to use the domino's pizza name will get expired okay so it is something again like a uh, tangible asset something like a machinery which keeps depreciating so for an intangible asset or a definitive intangible asset you can consider it to be a similar to a machinery where it will get depreciated at one point of time its value can become zero definite in definitive intangible assets are amortized so they have to be depreciated over its lifetime so that's about intangible assets so now we look at what is financial assets so financial assets are usually very 
different okay and uh, uh, usually we won't see this financial assets in a normal uh, examination questions we won't see it okay the reason is students might get confused okay so rather than giving the name financial assets they usually say investments okay investments by the company so what is this investments or what is this financial asset see financial asset refers to assets that arise from contractual agreements on future cash flows or from owning equity instruments of another entity okay in simple words what are contractual agreements okay contractual agreements can be like uh, you own a company and you give a loan to another company okay or to another person that is a contractual agreement between you okay so you give a loan and you are going to get an interest okay so that is a contractual agreement okay for which you are going to get future cash flows so that loan okay and the repayment of the So financial assets also refers to the owning of equity instruments of another entity. So for example, if uh, uh, you buy, if your company buys the shares of another company, so that also is called, called as a financial asset. Okay. It can in simple words called as an investment in other companies. So that's about the financial assets here. So types of financial asset can include cash, cash equivalents. So cash we know, but what is cash equivalents? Cash equivalents are like very short term uh, investments. Okay, something like a bank. Okay, or uh, uh, any short term uh, uh, instruments uh, like treasurable. So that can be cash equivalents. Okay, share of another company, debenture or convertible debenture of another company, or contractual rights to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity. Okay or to exchange financial asset or liability with an another entity under conditions that are potentially favorable to the entity okay so it can be also like exchange of shares from one company to another company also it can be considered provided this company makes a profit out of such a transaction okay so that is called as a financial asset so now we look at uh, current assets Current assets are like very important because uh, they uh, they are like uh, very important for a company. So in a company, if you take the non-current assets and current assets play a very huge role. So what are current assets? Current assets are all the assets of a company that are expected to be sold or used as a result of standard business operations over the next year. Okay. So current asset is something that is expected to be like used within a year or they are going to be sold within a year okay but within a year is the uh, norm here okay either it's going to be within a year or within an operating cycle so what is an operating cycle see operating cycle means some companies have a financial year of one year some companies usually have a lengthier financial year such as like 1.5 years or a one year three months like that okay so it can be we can't say that all companies will produce accounts in every 12 months some companies do it for do it for 15 months some companies do it for 18 months okay so within that one operating cycle of 12 months 15 months or 18 months the assets which are expected to be used okay are expected to be sold are current assets current assets are important to businesses because they can be used to fund day-to-day -day expenses business operations and to pay for the ongoing operating expenses okay so suddenly if uh, we have to pay a bill how can we pay it okay we can pay it by having cash in hand so cash is a current asset okay or suddenly we have to pay employee salary this month so how could we pay we can get money from the bank and we can pay it okay so bank is a current asset the money that we have deposited in bank is a current asset on the balance sheet Current assets are normally displayed in order of liquidity that is the most the items that are most likely to be converted into cash are ranked higher so cash will be the first one okay so the typical order would be like this cash and cash equivalents marketable securities such as treasury bills or short term bonds accounts receivable so in India we use the word uh, bills receivable okay or we use the word debtors okay. But in IFRS or international level, they use the word accounts receivable. 
So the next one is stock or inventory. Okay, we use the word stock. Normally we use the word stock. Okay, but in abroad they use the word inventory. Okay, so be comfortable in exchanging these words. Okay, stock or inventory or prepaid expenses. So these are the current assets. So we'll discuss about uh, one of the major current assets a company has, which is called as accounts receivable or debtors. So accounts receivable is the money due to a company for goods or services delivered or used, but not yet paid for by customers. So what happens here is the customers have bought goods, but they have not paid. So they are called as debtors or accounts receivable or even bills receivable. It is considered current asset as long as they are expected to be paid within a year. Okay. So if we are reasonably expecting they will pay within a year, it can be considered as accounts receivable. If they are not going to pay at all, if we expect that they are not going to pay at all, then it is a, we have to write it off as a loss. Okay. If we expect that they will pay in two years time, then it is not an accounts receivable. Okay. It becomes a long term liability. Sorry, it becomes a long term uh, loan, which is given by the company. Okay. If a business is making sales by offering longer terms of credit to its customers, a portion of its accounts receivable may not qualify for inclusion in current assets. So for example, if a company sells uh, goods worth 1 lakh to a customer, okay, the customer says I will pay 40,000 within this year, 60,000 in the next year. So 40,000 will be current asset. The 60,000 which will be paid in the next year only, okay, or in two years time, that amount will be considered as a non-current asset. Okay, so that will become something like a financial asset. Okay, because like it is not expected to uh, come to the company within a year. It is also possible that some accounts may never be paid in full. This consideration is reflected in an allowance for doubtful ac accounts. Okay, which is subtracted from the accounts receivable. So it's also possible that some of the amount okay if we sell uh, 1 lakh goods of worth of goods some 5000 might never be uh, expected to come so we have to have an allowance for that okay so in india we use the word provisions for uh, doubtful debtors okay in international level they use the word allowance for doubtful accounts okay so that's only the difference here if an account is never collected it is written down as a bad debt expense and such Entries are not considered as current assets. So if someone is expected to not pay at all, those amount will be considered as bad debts. Okay, and we should not we should not show that amount as a current asset. So now we'll move on to a much more important asset, which is called as the inventory. So inventory in our country we call it a stock, opening stock, closing stock. So what does inventory represent? See, inventory represents the raw materials, the components, the finished products. So different accounting methods can be used to inflate inventory and at times it may not be as liquid as other assets depending on the product and the industry sector. So see the valuation of inventory can be like differing from time to time. Okay. The problem is uh, Inventory is not as liquid as other items because if you have accounts receivable, okay, or if you have debtors, you can actually pledge accounts receivable and get some money. Okay, in inventory, pledging the inventory and getting money might be difficult because if you have pledged it, okay, how can you like sell it? Okay, so that there are some difficulties in uh, in valuing inventory here. For example, there is little or no guarantee that a dozen units of high cost cost heavy earth moving equipment may be sold over the next year but there is a re relatively higher chance of a successful sale of a thousand umbrellas in the coming rainy season okay so assume that you have finished goods and the finished goods that you have in your company are uh, something like uh, a huge earth moving equipment okay a huge something like a huge lorry okay or uh, something like a, a, a huge uh, construction equipment okay see you have like produced it and you have a lot of items in your inventory but can they sold in the next year the answer is it might not be okay so only when you can sell it within a year it is a 
current asset if you couldn't do it it becomes a non current asset okay so there are like problems like this okay but how do companies account them it's like unique to each and every company here inventory may not be as liquid as accounts receivable and it blocks the working capital so the money which you have spent to create the assets are actually blocking the money okay it's like uh, the money gets blocked in the inventory so you should not have inventory for a long time you should actually sell it soon and get the money back and inventory is very unique to every industry for example if you take a supermarket groceries vegetables and fruits are the inventory in groceries okay the life of groceries is only like three three days okay so within three days you have to sell or all of them are perished or if you take construction companies okay the building that they are constructing it will take something like three years okay it will take three years so for three years they will show it as an inventory only because for a construction company building is an inventory okay and and for manufacturers okay for example a bicycle manufacturer every bicycle manufacturer is a inventory okay so inventory is very uniquely changing from every business to business okay so the, that's about the inventory concept here so now we look at another kind of asset which is called as fictitious assets see fictitious assets are like very unique okay fictitious asset does not mean fake or fraudulent assets okay it's not that they are like fake assets but what it means is the assets which are not actually assets of the company though these are assets shown in the other side of the sopl okay sorry is it's sop i have wrongly typed it okay sofp so what does it mean here see uh, these are not actually assets you cannot sell them okay you cannot make money out of them and they will also not make money for you then how can we show it as an asset because in accounting the sofp the statement of financial position or the balance sheet has to tally okay in order to make it tally we have to put certain huge expenses okay on the asset side so that it will tally okay so you cannot sell these assets and they are like useless okay you cannot use it use them at all that's the concept here fictitious assets are the expenses which are not fully written off in sopl okay during particular accounting period these expenses or losses are spread over more than one year okay so for example uh, part of these expenses or losses are shown in sopl and the remaining amount will be carried forward to the following years okay so best example we'll put like this uh, assume that you have uh, you have paid for uh, better we'll see an example here itself okay we have a lot of examples okay see we'll take preliminary expenses see preliminary expenses is when you issue shares you have to pay a lot of expense okay you have to pay the government you have to pay merchant bankers you have to pay for rules and regulations for everything you have to pay this amount itself comes to a substantial number assume that it comes to around some uh, 10 lakhs okay or just we'll put for sake one crore see this one crore expense you have two options either you put it in the uh, as an expense in this year itself okay but we can't put that as an expense in this year itself because if you put it your profit would become very low your profit will suffer so don't you can't like put one crore as a uh, expense in this year better what you do you show it as an asset you show it as an asset and you keep on depreciating that for some five years or ten years okay see either way you have spent the preliminary expense okay it has the money has gone away from your hand okay but show this expense as an asset okay and every year you depreciate for some 10 years time slowly so what happens is rather than showing one crore as an expense in a single year you show one lakh as an expense for 10 years so one lakh one lakh one lakh like that you show for 10 years what happens is it becomes 10 lakhs okay so every year you show one lakh as an expense in your sopl in your sofp it comes like first year it looks like 10 lakhs okay preliminary expense which comes on the asset side will be 10 lakhs next year 9 then next year 8 then next year 7 okay it keeps on falling okay so that's about the fictitious assets